Who and what would I need to show up as to be the bride of Christ? And what kind of bride am I being at present? I'm coloring my roots today with all natural henna because I personally don't want all those chemicals in my hair <laughs> or in my skin. It's just, uh, it's not healthy for my body. It's not healthy for the planet, so. I'm not quite ready to be all natural gray because apparently this body really likes having red hair and it makes sense. And that's kind of the segue into what I'm gonna talk about today. Because what I realize is that this particular body is its own consciousness and has its own cravings. It's essentially, to paraphrase the Bible, hi Pep, hi, just give me a sec. To paraphrase the Bible, um, essentially sin works through the flesh. You know, sin is anything that is desirous to the physical body, to the eyes, everything that we perceive and think of in response to what we perceive. And how do we feel about that? Because that's, you know, is are we feeling from the heart or are we feeling from our stomach, our personal ego, right? Well, I guess Gypsy's got a lot to say, too. Um, I guess Spirit's working through both of us. So what is, what's today really all about besides looking like a dork in front of the entire world and really not having any personal care or concern about that? Because <laughs> that's your judgment, not mine. Um, the hair wants, the body wants red hair because the body has sin comes through the body satan works through the body and that's everything from what color of hair it wants to the fashion that it desires essentially it's all about the image the flesh that's what satan cares about right satan doesn't care about uh god's passion god's will because then we would be living truly from the heart but when you live in sin, you live primarily from your solar plexus, from your ego, from your personal power, your personal glory. That's how I've lived. And I have not met a human being on this planet yet that has shown me otherwise. So it makes sense why God says the hearts of men are wicked and essentially we're all in bondage to Satan because this is his domain. <laughs> and... In spite of the fact that Jesus is the Word, and the Word as we know it is the New Testament, the Holy Scriptures, which includes the Tanakh, the Torah, the Old Scriptures, well, the Hebrew Bible, and the New Testament. The New Testament contains aspects of the Hebrew Bible, so that's why it's kind of important that you know the Old Testament. I know Catholics don't, but Catholics have four books that they teach, and hmm, I'm not really sure why that is. I haven't asked. I haven't been curious enough to know, in spite of the fact that my daughter's Catholic, my first husband was Catholic, Dom and his family, well, Dom's really doesn't identify with anything. <laughs> well, because he's identifying with self, just like you and me, right? <clears throat> but for the sake of our image, to make it look like, this is the wolf in sheep's clothing, to make it look like we are living in the word of God, we show up at church in certain costumes with certain criticisms and judgments of everything about the church, including everyone in it, and making certain that we show up as a particular image that is in superiority to everyone else that is there at the church. Is that true? Yeah. What does God say about all that? See, that's the question I'm asking these days. <laughs> <clears throat> so the body wants red hair. Um, and I guess maybe because I'm so new, I've only just decided 
You know, I've tried a relationship with everything and everyone on this planet, and it's been hollow, empty, vacant, void, disappointing, disheartening, so sad that I'd rather not live than continue to live here. And God was saying, but hi, <laughs> you keep saying my name, Jude, and I know I'm in your heart, <laughs> but I'm just wondering, like, when are you going to show up as that? When are you going to show up to me, child? <laughs> like with all of you, not just a part of you here and there, whenever it's convenient for you. And I'm presupposing that that's what God thinks. But really, I have read the Bible, and if I was to paraphrase in today's language in a way that you and I would understand God speaking, I think that would be it. That would be like God being hip, right? <laughs> like word up saying today's language so that it'll catch your and my attention. So, I mean, I've never cared. In a sense, I've really never cared about what I look like for my sake. <laughs> but because I know everybody else wants me to be in this impressing mode. Right? Because I see everyone else doing it, you know. Oh, gosh. Oh, do I have to keep doing this, Lord? Do I have to keep doing this? Well, honey, again, I'm going to say until you come back to remember that in spite of the fact that you think you're alone and that you think you're lonely, I'm here. Where are you? I've always been here, but where are you? I look around and I ask, well, <laughs> that's a really good question, God. Where am I? Where am I in this life? In this life and who, like who and what created all that, right? Because I can't even take credit for all this. Well, where am I in that life and that? God, gee, that's what I keep saying is you. You're this vastness that... I hear, I feel, I sense, I smell, I taste. And yet, <sighs> ugh, I don't really walk with you. I listen to you. And I'm listening again to you. But I've never decided to come into the garden and walk with you. And I know it's because... I know it's because I'm a sinner. I know that this flesh is nothing but sin. I mean, it's not. The body is holy because you created it that way. But, you know, we're still in the Garden of Eden being tempted by the serpent every moment of every day. That wasn't just a one-time thing with Adam and Eve. It's happening in every moment in your and my existence. Now, that's what I've become aware of. And so coming back to, you know, coming out in a plastic bag on my head because I do my own hair. You know, it was funny because that was not, when I was growing up, I, well, that's just what you did. <laughs> you took care of yourself because you didn't rely on other people to do that for you because you're too busy walking around looking like God and acting like God and making certain that all the cameras are on you at all times. And yet we have a problem with CCTV, like being everywhere, seriously. And yet we pull out our phones and, you know, oh, I'm doing a video for, you know, everybody to look at me. I've done it. I've done it. I've, I've, I have done this on this channel. <laughs> and it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Who and what and where am I? So, coloring the hair and still working through that trying to understand why am I letting the body 
Satan through the body because it's still about beauty and image. Right? I am i don't know. Maybe God talks about women, her hair is her adornment, and it's not that the adorning of the hair is evil, but the intention that most of us women and men have lived in with the adornment of the hair has become evil because it's all about I need to be God in your eyes. I need to look so beautiful and it starts with the hair. Well, as an older woman it does. And then our children who we're raising, they see that and they mimic it and so it becomes just their daily habit and you know, it's it's normal. And then it's well, then it goes to makeup and hair. So it's all about the image, right? To the point where today I discovered, not this gentleman, a, a young woman who I'm sure really truly loves God and Christ in her heart, but did a video on what she's wearing to church. And I just, I wrote it to her. I can't stop myself anymore. It's like, imagine if Christ showed up to his 12 apostles and like, well, guys, look what I'm wearing to church today. Is that who Christ is for you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I heard about Christ once as a child. And then I read about Christ once as an adult. And now I'm going back to Christ as an adult. Because I'm like, whoa, <laughs> Jesus, I apologize on behalf of humanity. I apologize because who you are and who people say they are <laughs> as Christ, as living with Christ, <sighs> I don't know. I just keep hearing, "Twas better to have never known me than to profane against me. I don't know, that must be a passage in the scripture. I don't remember. I just, maybe I do remember, but I don't take credit for it, <laughs> right? Because even in that, taking the glory and the credit of God's word, that's now I'm claiming it, I'm gonna be the God. I'm gonna show up and I am the representative of God. I thought I was supposed to be like a little child and just ask questions and listen and take the hand of my father and walk in the garden and, well, what do I do when I'm in nature? It irritates Don, by the way. I stop and I examine the leaf. And I'm like, God, why is this leaf long? And, and why does it have different shades of green in it? And what is this? <laughs> and well, why did you create this? Why did you create this, God? And you told me to tend to the garden. I'm just a child, by the way. You told me to tend to the garden. Oh, Lord, is that why you also told me that I just need to play in this way of yoga asana through gymnastics and and then ask, what is this movement? Who and what does this movement belong to? Who and what does this energy belong to? As I'm, you know, in Backbridge, my spine's tightening up, and my eyes are getting wider, and I'm like, ah! why am I so scared in this posture? What is that? What does that posture do? For whoever it is that I'm claiming I am as you. Because I'm pretending I'm God. And yet, when I'm in wheel or back walkover, if you're a previous gymnastic or current gymnastic, um, why am I confident, more confident this way than this way? Well, who and what am I seeing at this angle in life? I'm seeing all of you. I've always wondered why I look up 
when I'm talking to God and why, oh my gosh, I have to strain so much. My core is so weak and I have to bend backwards and get support with my hands lest I be completely crushed. And yet I find in that back wheel, if I can let go of all the tightening in my spine and the fear of being so exposed to who and what? To God. I, I can't do anything or be anything to impress God. But I can do that to all of you and you can do that to me. How do you impress the Creator? <laughs> I mean, stop and think about it. Do you think that you taking the glory of everything you show up as is impressing the Creator? It might be impressing the Lord, Satan, that's ruling over this worldly, materially dimension. Materially dimension, yeah. Because, you know, this is his punishment for himself having done that to God. We're his offspring. <laughs> so, like, what master am I serving? Like everyone else on this planet, I have been serving the master, Satan. And so have all of you. And so are all of we currently. So, you know, this was the most terrifying pose for me of all the gymnastics or yoga asanas or gymnastic postures. I even had fear getting into that posture because it was, oh good Lord, I thought I was God. I mean, I've heard about you, but they don't teach you anymore. I mean, pff, you're so far out of the equation, and when you are in the equation, well, it's all to impress this world. Because I still haven't yet realized how deep in sin I am. So I'll, sh I'll pretend to show up as a Christian, and I'll pr pretend to show up as all the other religions, and non-religions, and no religions, but I'm, I'm, I can't help but wonder, like, what is it going to take for me to truly show up, to really just let go of all that tension in the spine and the stretching and the, of the front, of the front that's exposed to God and a, a, a constriction of my back. Your back's all associated to money pain. Your entire spine about money when it's upright. But oh my goodness, what's happening when you're squishing it in that back posture? It's like you're squishing Satan out of your spine. Because <laughs> the rest of you is looking up saying, oh my gosh, there's so much more that I haven't even contemplated about life about God and how incredibly interesting it must be for someone who can be in both worlds you know it's kind of feels like being in it but not of it you know there's God you know you're sinning <sighs> probably waiting for the last day right whether it's of your own personal life and everyday civilization or it's the collapse of our current civilization or who knows maybe truly the last hour <laughs> none of us know because you know the what does God say God says no one will know the time or day I will come like a thief in the night in the night do you know what night and day are it precedes the sun and the moon one is the darkness Satan one is the light Jesus. But God comes in the darkness. Mm-hmm. 
you're not going to see him because who and what's in the darkness? We are. God has to come through. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but God's not here. In the, in the early part of the scripture, he left. His sin, his spirit could not dwell in this darkness. It was too evil, too vile, too impure, too unholy. <laughs> so, but God's going to come back. And he already revealed that he's capable of doing that through his son, Jesus. Ah, oh. yeah, see, God came here once as a flesh. And he said he's going to come back again. So here's the thing. He had to become the holiness of the physical body and maintain that in all this evil and dark. That's not something any of us can be or do because we haven't been willing to let his will be done. <laughs> So, all the messages were for me first. The Lord's Prayer, the Serenity Prayer, the two most important prayers, two most important prayers. And, well, to someone like me, that I know of God, but I haven't really listened. Well, I have. I listened. I noted what God said. And then I just went, like, you know, and experienced the world. All these different material things and who I had to show up as. Why do I not want to show you my bed? Ooh, that's icky. Yeah. I'll go there in a minute. I'll go there in a minute. But with me first. You always second. Who and what do I have to pretend to be on this plane, in this earthly, satanic material? But it's not. It's not. The earth isn't sinful. It was cursed. The ground was cursed. But the earth itself is not sinful because God created the earth and the heavens. God created everything. So it's the world's not sinful. We say that. And why do we say that? <laughs> because we're projecting our sinfulness out, refusing to take accountability from within. Who and what Am I without breath? So who and what is breath that sustains me? Because without breath, do you really think that I would be alive to experience hair? And wow, God created these plants and look what it does to the color of my hair. Wow, thank you God. Well, God, does this please you? Does it delight you that I have red hair? You know, I really don't care one way or the other. I do, because it pleases you. But what I say, I don't care. It's, I guess I don't care in a world of sin, the judgments that people have of me, because it pleases God. So that's where I stand step into, well, that's an interesting point of view, that you have that point of view. And I wonder what else is possible. Not just for you, but also for me. Because if, if I get out of judgment, and if I get out of all this carnal sin, the sin of the flesh and the eyes and pride, then I can truly just say, hmm, the hair is red. I don't have to judge it. 
and you can come up to me and say, it's like, you know, God, what color is this? Green. Oh, green. It's red. Oh, what color is this? Oh, it's red. Oh, well, what does that do? What, what does that mean to you, God? Because I can spin up a hundred thousand stories, but I didn't create anything. I don't know how to do that. I don't, I don't know how to create this. And I sure as heck don't know how to create this. So if I don't know how to create it, then why am I taking all the glory for it? This is the path I'm currently on. And how I show up day to day, I'm just letting myself be moved by spirit. And what pleases the Lord today? <laughs> so I guess that's how, as an image, I will show up. And maybe note your judgments, right? of everything that you see and hear and say. And what does that talk about you as a person in a material world versus you as the spirit of... as something that is created by God? Because I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what it, who and what a spirit is. <laughs> I can only say that it's something I see and feel and hear and taste and touch, but not really with the physical body, right? It's, it's on some other level. <laughs> but so are all the sins, so are all the desires, so are all the daily thoughts and the me, me, my, my, ours, yours, mine, you know, and then everything else that goes with that, whether it's harmonious or disagreement. And all the reasons for that, too. <laughs> so, I guess that's all I got to say about that. And I guess that's all I really wanted to talk to to me to God today. When I speak, I know it's to hear myself, not to be impressed by all of you. It's to hear myself because God has taught me how to speak. Um, I, don't, I don't know, did you take credit that you could teach your kids how to speak? I never did. <laughs> because I can't take credit for how I know how to speak. That's, God gave that to me. God gives me the words. God gives me the language. God gives me the comprehension to read and to write, to know. I, take, I can't take credit for that. So, you know, where is my speech coming from? That's not something you can answer. That's something only God can answer. For me, <laughs> if God's willing to answer, and and maybe God's willing to answer, but maybe I haven't yet grown, you know, because I'm a child in the garden with God, yet unless you become like little children, and I grow just because I'm a, a physical adult in this, as this body, as you and I claim we are. You're hungry? Okay, okay, for food. Yeah. What time is it? 11.05. Okay. All right. Just two more minutes. Three? Uh, two minutes. I better wrap up. I have grown up physically in this material world as a material body. It's called aging. This is the opposite of what God is offering me if I walk in the garden with him as a little child. That I age 
in a different way. Not the physical body. The physical body doesn't have to age then. But something else matures, becomes wise. That is not anything I've experienced in myself or any other human on this planet. Not in the 57 years that I've been alive. So, whatever your perception of the world is right now, whether it's your own personal can't pay my bills because you're in, that's where you be, or it's the economy's collapsing in general, or it's like, looks like the end of civilization, or it's this feels like a spiritual war, and I think we're going to be okay. Or it's, this is Satan's domain. And, you know, I've read the Bible and I'm trusting, even if I don't understand it. And I've done all this quietly and privately, and yes, I do my responsibilities of showing up in the world. And... I've done my fellowship and my community ship and I've done my dharma and my karma and I am waiting patiently, Lord. Or whether you're just like, you think there's any truth to this like God and the devil thing? Well, let's talk about it. Okay. You know, we are many different variations of sin and how we relate to ourselves, each other, and to God and Satan. <laughs> Regardless of where you are in your spectrum of believing what is happening in the world. I don't know, maybe you even think aliens are going to come down and abduct us. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many different stories out there. Right? But what does God say? What does God say? Does God say gypsies hungry for food? Who and what who and what tells her body what to eat, when to eat, why to eat, how to eat? It's things you take for granted. I know I do. Well, I have until I asked the question. Until I decided, you know what? I I need to walk with God regardless of what I'm perceiving, like all of you, of what's happening in the world. I don't want to wait until my last breath because who, and, like I said earlier, who and what is the, is the breath that maintains this body? I don't want to wait until that final breath is taken from me before I decide, okay, now I'll be like a little child and walk with God. Is it possible? I don't know. <laughs> what does God say? I know Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. <laughs> so, is it ever really too late? I mean, is this maybe where even stories like hell and purgatory? I don't know. What does God say? Is the end the end? Or is that just the beginning of the end and the beginning of a new cycle for demons and Satan. I don't know. What does God say? When was the last time you read the Bible? I just got a new Bible. I bought one earlier. Font was still a little too small. Dom liked it. What Dom does with it, that's his journey. And I'm asking God, even if Dom doesn't, I'll ask God on 
Dom's behalf because God chose him for me. <laughs> or, you know, I want to take all the credit for that, right? You fit all my categories, right? Checked off all my, check, you know, the check, check. You fit my list <laughs> of things that I require in a man. <laughs> you know, I'm going to take all the credit for that. Your job, everything, I'm going to take credit for that. <laughs> I'm not going to give that glory to God. No, 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 no. My husband, I picked him, you know, that and they away. Really, ladies, men, you think you picked your wife? <laughs> you think you picked all that? Okay, okay, okay. So I will ask on behalf of Dom. I'll ask God on Dom's behalf. I will just keep asking him if he will guide Dom. If he will guide Dom. And he does. And yet, like you and me, Dom just keeps dropping into sin. He hears God. And sometimes, you know, it's like Murphy's Law, one out of eight times, he'll obey. But I kind of think that's like, you know, Lot saying, God, if there's just one, if there's just one, like one whole of us or just like one part of us, of the wholeness of us that clings to you, are we still redeemable? Gee, I hope so. Hope, faith. And love. That's what Christ says. Right? So that's where I, that's the hope that I'm hoping for. Not the hope which is really hopelessness and disguise of, well, I really hope I get this this uh, job because, you know, I want this and this and this and this and this. I want it for me. Right? But It's the hope where if I believe I can walk with God, then I need to believe that is possible and true for all of you. I have to. <laughs> because any doubt at all is essentially saying that God is not in control of all that that I still think I am. <laughs> and what do I honestly believe about me? Well, one way or another, I'm fucked. And so are all of you. And, and whether that's literal or metaphor, metaphorical or both, And yet, what does he say at the end, right? Yeah, are we, are we destroyed? I don't know, maybe you should go read it. I should read it too. Which is why I bought the original Bible and gave it to Dom and then bought a larger print Bible that I can actually read. <laughs> I mean, I bought the New Testament first and the font was good for me to see it, you know, without having to wear glasses, right? It, why am I trying to decide what I can and cannot see based on distance? I keep asking myself that, that I need to have these glasses when God created perfect vision. Where am I in sin of all that? Of my vision? My clarity? Well, vision and clarity gives you insight and understanding on a metaphorical level. <sighs> as well as on a physical level. So, when and where, again, right? Sin works through the, the flesh and the eyes. So even at a physical eye, Sin works through the physical eyes. 
as physical symptoms. And then pride. Maybe I'll save that for another day. Because I thought we were just going two more minutes. <sighs> because I was trying to dictate that. God speaks, I guess, to me because I keep asking questions and I have to keep being humble and saying, thank you, yes. What other questions do I have about what you just said, Lord? Was I really listening to you or, oh, I think I was listening to myself again, God. You know, meditation, you know this as monkey brain, right? In access consciousness, this is, well, who or what are these thoughts and whom, what do they belong to? <laughs> All sorts of different ways to conclude the same message to whatever way that we understand the message. But essentially for me, it's, oh yeah, I was busy listening to me, Lord. I know what that's like because, you know, I see it with me and Dom and I'm grateful for being able to see it because then it's like, where am I doing this in my life with God? Because I've decided I'm going to walk in the garden with God. You see, there's, there's his story, and then there's the story of something or someone else that we're living. And it's called Satan. Satan's to me. It's God's earth. These are God's holy bodies. But Satan has profaned it all through the flesh and the eyes and pride. Pride. I think that's one I'm gonna go sit in now because it's time for me to get my color out of my hair. It's time to feed Gypsy. And, ooh, I suspect I am horribly sinful in pride. What is pride? Gay Pride Day. What other Pride Days do we have? Flag Day, maybe. A lot of pride in our nationalities. A lot of pride. Ooh, what does God say about pride? That'll be our next subject.